Hey all, it is day 15 and our declaration today is, I am an heir. I am a co-heir with Jesus Christ. Well, what does it mean to be an heir? An heir means, most of us in today's um, definitions would understand, that if our parents died and they left us as heir, or our grandparents died, or our great uncle died, and they left us, us as heir, we would get whatever belonged to them if we were their heir. Maybe they had life insurance, maybe that a home or a car or items within their home. All of that would belong to us and it would be unquestioned. So the scripture today um, declares that we are co-heirs with Jesus. So what exactly does that mean? Because when we become a believer in Christ, um, we believe in Jesus, um, we've been given the privilege of being um, a co-heir with Jesus because we are adopted sons of God, sons and daughters of God. So we're treated as firstborn heirs, and that you can find in Hebrews 12, 23, that says, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, that would be us if we're saved, we're enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of righteous, the righteous made perfect. Now, I will tell you that there's some controversy with the scripture, but that's how I read it. So you, if you read it differently, okay. But that's how I read that, is that we are con also considered firstborn, which is kind of miraculous. How can Jesus be a firstborn and we be a firstborn? But that's what the scripture says, right? So our inheritance, what does our inheritance include? It includes salvation. Um, it includes eternal life. And it even um, gives us a measure of the throne of Christ because we will rule and reign with him in the end days. One of the greatest things, I believe that salvation brings to us, or being a co-heir with Jesus, it gives us the right to enter into God's presence. There's a scripture that talks about we can come boldly before the throne of God. We have a relationship with him. He is our father. And if you've had a good relationship with your father, then you know that you can go in and ask your father. And if it's anything within his ability to give to you, he's going to do that. And that's how our heavenly father is. If it's within his ability, and we know that he's unlimited in his abilities, then he's going to give it to us, especially if it lines up with his word and his, his word, his purpose and our destiny. So to me, um, being a joint heir with Christ or with Jesus has so many impl implications because it goes so far. If you go even back into um, history and you go back into the Old Testament and you do some study on what it means to be, um, to get the birthright, because the firstborn always got the birthright. Well, this um let me let me let's talk about that for a second the word birthright or the concept of birthright denotes the special privileges and advantages that are be that belong to the firstborn son among the Jews so he became the priest of the family he became the head of the family and so um he became uh if he was in certain tribes he became the priesthood right so the firstborn son had allotted to him a double portion he got double of what everybody else got and um, there are some instances in scripture where the younger became, because there were some instances, but it was a general rule that the firstborn son got a double. So the Jews attached a sacred importance to the rank of firstborn and a first begotten. And you had extra responsibilities because not only did you get double, but that meant you were responsible for the rest of the family. So I can see how we could kind of use that a little bit and, and not taking it out of context. But if we're a firstborn, we're responsible for our brothers and sisters. Sure, they're firstborn too, but that makes them responsible for us, right? Isn't that what the scripture says that we're supposed to help one another? And um, even the early church met together and looked over the letters, which we now know as, as the New Testament. And they discussed with one another how it applied to what they knew in their the history of their Judaism, right? Because that was the only lens from which they could look. And it's really a lens that we miss out today because um, those of us who are not Jewish. So I don't want to digress and get off the topic. But the topic today is I am an heir. I am a co-heir with Jesus. And one of the things that I said very at the very beginning is that somebody died. Well, Jesus already died. So we already have the heir. We are possess the, the items that were transferred to us at his death. And those things are, first of all and foremost, our salvation. That can't be taken away. It belongs to us. So let's rejoice together and let's continue to declare that over our lives that I am an heir. I am a co-heir with Jesus Christ. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.